I am nailed to white time, surrounded by space and shallow breath. All the thoughts I'd hoped to forget, they swirl around my head, the seeds of non-existence, condensation of infinity. She turns them to cotton. They crawl all over me, tickle and sting like insects disinfecting the lesions that suck my heart dry. All day, all night, all life. My body stiffens. Cotton memories draw sadness through my dilating pores to the surface of my skin. Escape artists liquefied, each as unique as microscopic tears. They gather and roll and drip from the tips of my fingers, flooding the labyrinth that are my prints with reflections of Father John, using his to explore how I feel inside. I hover, waiting for she to speak. Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your she, she, she. She's voice is a whisper, a shy child. I eagerly await her soft white time, where time stands still, where she cuts me, breaks me, soothes me, heals me until I bleed silver from where Father John explored with his labyrinths. I see it happen in the reflection of my floating tears before it does. But I feel how I have always wanted to feel, safe, lost, in a place like heaven, but not heaven at all. I am not slow to fulfill my promise, as some count slowness. I am patient toward you, not wishing that you should perish, but that you should reach repentance. I stand still, arms out to the side, head hanging like Jesus, unable to move. It seems like days. The whoosh of silver tears through my hands and feet do not cause pain, but heal my self-inflicted wounds. If she lets me go, I would not want to. I do not want to return home. I like it here, wet with the sweat of the past, no longer trapped where it eats like acid to a corpse from the inside out. That's where it always started, from inside, and ended on the outside, in the form of stigmata and release. My mother would push up my sleeves, and she would wet her face with her own past and hug me until I feigned a seizure. I never cry. I puncture. Now, for the first time in my life, I'm able to relish the throb of pain in my heart, in my head, and the ensuing relief as the weight in my chest, in my limbs, liquefies and dissolves. Like that moment at first light when you open your eyes and have forgotten the knot in the back of your throat from the memory of Father John's labyrinths, exploring the years of self-hate, where silver now pours from me and deems me forbidden. My body grows lighter and quiet and small. I lose traction from the surface of time, if there is a surface at all. I look down at my feet. They are bleeding too, and so are my palms. I'm completely naked, anatomy omitted, my breasts completely flat, the shape of my body androgynous. I am inviolable, a dove in a glass box, thriving without air. She, 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 the sheen of white time and space surrounding me weakens in density. And the world spins, spins, spins around and about my head around and fast and fleeting and closer and quicker and beating. A tornado of air gathers in my stomach, and I want to throw up. I want the spinning to stop. Make it stop, I scream. Make it stop, stop, stop. It does. There is silence. 
An Oriole. I lost her when I was ten. I never saw her again. It was all my fault. I hadn't noticed the unravelling cord, the fibres splitting like a burnt offering. The leash snapped in the woods, schwack like the sound of flagellation. That day the heavy-headed mornings began to shadow the truth with branches from rotting sacred trees. I was to blame. I've hated myself ever since. It's why Father John tried to cure me, move me, mould me, scold me, make me plead guilty, guilty, guilty. How could I have been so careless to neglect unconditional love? Oriole licks blood from my feet. My blood turns silver on her tongue, and the white time and space returns, encases us with the weightlessness of freedom, acceptance. I am nothing but zeros, tumbling through tunnels, tumbling through white holes in the universe. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. Oriole whimpers and walks backwards. Her eyes widen as a knife slices vertically down the centre of my back. As I open my mouth to scream, the pain is soothed. A cold heat flushes through my spine, like stealing warmth in a slither of sun in the snow. Birds in flight flutter behind me, echo in slow motion. Fill the air with thick sound waves. Make the encompassing white sheen tremble like quaking earth beneath the sea. Feathers brush against the back of my neck and whisper, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though she die, yet shall she live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? I turn my head. They are not birds at all. The sound is coming from my wings, wings, wings. My arms tingle. I hold my hands in front of me. They're invisible, but I can still make them out, framed in silver light. I rub my fingers together, and the light rubs off like ash. And when I blow on the ash, it sparkles in the air like sun shining through mist. I feel alive for the first time in my life. No heavy head, no fears, no hiding, no secrets. Oriole sits and holds out her paw. I smile, kneel beside her, scratch below her chin. I can sense my movements, though I cannot see them. My brain is reflecting my thoughts into space. Holograms of intent. We belong here, Oriole and me. Please, she, don't make us leave. In the path of righteousness is life, and in its pathway there is no death. Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it is in your power to do it. She hums and strokes my wings rips them from my back, but there is no pain, just an all-encompassing emptiness. She who conceals her transgressions will not prosper, but she who confesses and forsakes them will obtain mercy, mercy, mercy. She's voice vibrates through my body, kick-starting my pulse. No, no, no! I awake with a jolt, a winded chest, and a tube down my throat that tastes like flesh. I am lying down, arms out to the side, legs flattened to the white bed, strapped down tight. Lights flash in my eyes as they are pried open with stiff, cold fingers. A man murmurs, she is lucky to be alive. Monitors beep, mother soothes. Baby, please stop doing this. She wipes my forehead with a wet cloth, then gently kisses my hand. My limbs ache. My head aches. 
my heart beats in my ears, and I remember all the blood. The release staining the water as I punctured my wrists with nails. I drove them into my skin with so much rage I forgot I was hurting myself and not Father John. I close my eyes and swallow. She's voice echoes in my head. Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it is in your power to do it. And I picture the stray dog I feed every morning at 9 a.m. sharp by our letterbox. Unconditional love. I stare at the ceiling as Mother rests her head beside mine and cries on my pillow. The heavy drop of each tear on starched linen, a mark of Mother's faith. Guilt for Sundays, pride for obedience, guilt for silence, pride for sustained worship. Father John will be here soon, Mother says, for you to repent. Mother squeezes my arm with a sniff, as if acknowledging my pain, my fate, is enough for me to forgive her. I take a deep breath, hold it until my vision blurs, and my chest aches, as if being held down by Father John's weight. I turn my head and look Mother in the eyes. I see a reflection of she. Her voice washes through me cleansing my veins with absolution. Don't be afraid, for I am with you. But I am afraid. I will always be afraid. Of Father John, my daddy, my only road to she.